is the NCAA has officially come out with an interim policy regarding name, image, and likeness. This is clearly going to change what college football looks like going forward. But before we talk about that, let's dig into this policy and see what it actually says. With a unanimous decision, the Supreme Court recently ruled that the NCAA restrictions on educational benefits for football players violated antitrust laws. On the heels of that decision, the NCAA created a new interim policy to address name, image, and likeness for football players. This is going to make it where college athletes can now make money from their own brand, their name, their image, and their likeness. So let's go ahead and dig into that policy a little more to see what the NCAA has said right now. Keep in mind this is an interim policy before they come out with a full statement and a full policy on this matter. First, let's take a look at this statement from NCAA President Mark Emmert. This is an important day for college athletes since they are all now able to take advantage of name, image, and likeness opportunities. NCAA President Mark Emmert said, with the variety of state laws adopted across the country, we will continue to work with Congress to develop a solution that will provide clarity on a national level. The current environment, both legal and legislative, prevents us from providing a more permanent solution and the level of detail student athletes deserve. It's about time that the NCAA actually does something about this, even though the Supreme Court had to basically drag them kicking and screaming to make this decision. Ultimately, I'm happy for players that this happened because this is going to be benefit them in the very near future. And that near future is July 1st, 2021. Hey, before we keep going, if you can do me a favor and hit the like button because the YouTube algorithm likes that and it will recommend my video to more people. Let's keep going. That's what the NCAA president said. So now let's actually dig into the policy to see what this means for players. One of the first things that the NCAA made very clear is that this is not a pay for play kind of thing. That means that players could not be paid, let's say like $50,000 if they were to come to a certain school. That's not okay. You also cannot pay players for winning games, scoring touchdowns, catching passes, anything like that. Pay for play is still not okay. So while the NCAA has been specific about some things they are not going to allow, like some uh, incentives with recruiting or the pay for play that I just mentioned, they've honestly been very vague and kind of left things open regarding things that are allowed. I expect that we will receive some more specific guidance in the future on what this policy means and how it uh, will shape things for college football players. But in the meantime, I fully expect that players are going to test the waters on what is and is not allowed. And here are some of the things that I think they will try. Here are five ways I expect players to take advantage of this new policy. Number one is merchandise. I fully expect as soon as July 1st that we're going to see players start uh, pitching their own merchandise, they're going to set up their own merch shops. Uh, I imagine they'll sell t-shirts. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if jerseys will be okay or not, but sneakers, um, any kind of apparel you can think of, I think they're going to try to sell it. I think this will be one of the first things that they do try because it's so easy to set up uh, merch shops online. So I am interested in... Which players do you think will set up a merch shop or uh, sell their own merchandise first? Let me know down in the comments who you think will set up their own merch shops and who you want to see merchandise from. If there's a player you think should start selling their own t-shirts and hoodies and sneakers and all that, let me know in the comments below. Number two, branding. This kind of goes along with the first one I mentioned, merchandise, but I fully expect players to start their own brands, logos, and other trademarks. And actually, we've already seen this happen. Look at what we're seeing from Wisconsin quarterback Graham Mertz. Mertz appears to be the first player to take advantage of this new ruling, and that was evident when he released a, vi a video on Twitter on June 28th, releasing his new logo. So this is his personal logo. Take a look at this video. 
This video that he released on June 28th revealed his new trademark logo, and I expect to see a lot more of these uh, in the very near future. Uh, you know, same thing here. If you see other players creating their own brands or logos, please let me know about it in the comments below. Number three is autographs and appearances. I expect that they will be invited places. They'll be sponsored by stores or something like that or sponsored by events. And they will be, I imagine, paid for that appearance, but also be paid for their autographs at those events. And that will be, an honestly, an easy way for players to make money because that's something that will be in demand pretty quickly. So I do see this happening, especially as we get closer to the start of the football season. Number four is sponsorships. Uh, this is one of the things that will be a little tricky. And the reason this is going to be tricky is that, from what I've heard, players will have to be careful about sponsorships they take. All of this stuff has to be funneled through the university, but one thing they're going to be looking for, they will be looking to see if the brands that players are working with are in conflict with brands that the university is already dealing with. For example, Auburn players could not have a deal with, let's say, um, Adidas or some, something like that because Auburn is working with Under Armour. So they could not have a deal with a conflicting uh, brand. A player couldn't go and get sponsored by Nike because of the deal with Under Armour. So that's something the university is going to have to figure out, and Auburn actually already has a program in place to deal with that and I'll show you that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and look at number five. Number five is monetizing social media and YouTube channels. I expect we'll see a lot of players take advantage of this day one and that's because it's easy to set up. All these players already have this stuff to begin with and so I think they will start uh, figuring out how they can get these deals as soon as possible. I could easily see a player starting their own YouTube channel, uh, showing how they're training when it's you know not sponsored by Auburn, but showing some of the things they do. It could just be vlog style. I could see people being into watching that, but eventually they're going to get enough uh, watch time and subscribers that they can monetize it, and I think they will monetize it immediately. And from there, you can sell your own merch. You can sell... If you develop your own program, uh, like weight training or whatever, they're going to find ways to make money. And that YouTube channel or social media just makes it where they can advertise it themselves to people who already like them and follow them. One thing I've said before that I'm very interested in is if players make these YouTube channels and figure out that they can go live and... Uh, subscribers can donate money to them that's something the university is going to have to watch because i could see that being abused by certain people uh i don't want to say it's going to happen but i think there's definitely the potential for some nefarious activity to go on if these players start getting super chats and that kind of thing where they're making that youtube money directly from people I think that could be problematic, so they are going to have to watch that and come up with a policy for how to handle that. Luckily for Auburn players, it does appear that Auburn has already created a program called Spirit to help players with name, image, and likeness-related education. This is something that I don't know much about, so I do have to read some more, but I am glad to hear that Auburn's already thinking ahead and they put this in place. And so there, I'm going to link down to an article in the description below where you can go read more about that program. The article's from May 20th. I should also point out that it's been stated that players will be able to work with lawyers and agents if they want to. Uh, this is, like I said, this is a developing story overall. And so this is kind of what we know so far, but it's going to be very interesting to see how things change and what the landscape of college football actually looks like at the start of this football season in the fall. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.